Welcome to the Stronger Tides podcast, the podcast for small business entrepreneurs and corporate executives to learn more about increasing their client or employee retention through a group cruise program. Ready to drop anchor? Here's your host, travel advisor, Rita Perez. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is election day. We're not going to get too much into the election. This is just a friendly reminder. If you have not voted, it is time to vote. Let your voice be heard. Now let's get into the real fun of today. And that is to talk about the most important cruise news that is going on right now. The news we have been waiting months for. The CDC finally lifted the cruise ship ban in the Americas. Woohoo! Oh my goodness, if you had if you follow me on any of my socials, you obviously know how stinking excited I was on Friday when I got that. I literally almost didn't believe that it was real. You know, like something that you have been wanting to happen and come to fruition for such a long time. And it came and you're like, is this real? Is this really happening? And I was very overcome with emotions on Friday. It was, you know, like a release, like, thank God, like it is finally over. Like we wear that hope that we so desperately needed in this industry is finally coming back. It's a slow comeback, but at least like the ban is gone. <laughs> the ban is gone. I can't say more about that. Um, there's so many people that have been affected by this. And I feel like sometimes people might think that it might be a little vain to be so excited about something like this, like the cruise ban being lifted. But this is such a huge sigh of relief to me who is directly affected because that's what that's what I sell. That's the product that I sell in my travel business are cruises. And I can't sell any if there's a ban and people aren't comfortable obviously. Um, but it's not just me. It's not just travel advisors. It's people on the cruise line side. And this is not just executives that I'm talking about. This is like the customer service reps. This goes to like accounting. This goes to the people that support me. This goes to the people who are at the ports helping check you in. This goes to the porters who are at the ports taking your luggage, the taxi drivers, the Uber drivers that take you to the port, the people who are loading the food onto the ships, the people who provide the food for the ships, the maintenance people. This goes to every single crew member that's on the ships. Then when you get to the different destinations, this goes to the, the shop owners, the restaurant owners, hotel owners. There are so many people that have been affected by this cruise ship ban. It is so outrageous and unreal. Like, I understand why the ban had to happen to begin with, but when you see other areas such as Europe being able to safely sail for a couple of months now, it's kind of like, you need to give us a bone. And we finally got that <laughs> bone. And so I also don't want you to think like, woo, you can go ahead and you can go book a cruise for tomorrow because that is also not what, what is going on right now. So the CDC approved on a conditional basis. So, and this is probably what we needed a couple of months ago so we could start cruising right now. And so what exactly does this con conditional basis mean? So right now, is when the cruise cruise ships, the cruise lines are actually able to put into place all these protocols that we have been talking about. So right now, as we speak, cruise ships are heading to different ports to pick up crew members from around the world. It, it's really amazing. So they're going to like the different ports around the world to pick them up and bring them a little bit closer to the United States 
Uh, and I have a strong feeling that a lot of this restart is going to be here in Florida, which is great for me. <laughs> I'll be a guinea pig. So they're going to have to train all the crew. First, they're going to have to establish what their protocols are going to be based on their work with the CDC and with the Healthy Sale Panel. So I had a podcast a couple weeks ago. Um, I, actually, it's probably been a month now of the different recommendations that this Healthy Sale Panel had in order for the cruise lines to cruise safely. So I am sure they're going to be following pretty much those protocols unless the CDC finds something that needs to be like enhanced. I don't really see them deviating from those guidelines. Um, so there's they have to select what they're going to be doing and they have to go ahead and train their crew to make sure they carry it out. I know a lot of people have been asking me like, are you sure that this is even going to work? And I'm like, I'm pretty certain because of the example that the lines over in Europe have been able to provide us. I am certainly certain, certain that the executives at these cruise lines know how critically important it is for them to get these protocols right. And for this testing period that's hap that will be happening soon, to be done correctly. They know exactly what is at stake. They won't have sailed in nine months, which in itself is outrageous that the cruise ships have not sailed in nine months from uh, the United States. Anyways, I digress. Hey, hey, interested in getting an actual numbers comparison of a land retreat versus a cruise retreat? You know, honestly, when I was putting this document together, I couldn't even believe the great difference between the numbers. Visit StrongerTidesPodcast.com to be added to my weekly email list and get the download now. Back to the show. So you can see why it's very important. If they do something incorrect or they don't follow something to the T, the CDC can just like brush the rug under them and pull the plug so quickly, I feel like, that they are not willing to risk that from happening. And just like in Europe where the people, if you don't stick to your designated group, you are kicked off the cruise ship. And this is in it, pertaining to excursions. I think the same thing is going to happen here. Some innovations that I've heard of, I don't know if I have mentioned it before, in... I, I believe it was MSC. I had seen a piece of with MSC Cruises about them using these bracelets that go around your wrist, obviously, and they are used for contact tracing. So if anybody's been within three feet of you, that it will pick it up. For some reason, if, if somebody ends up being sick and they need to be quarantined, it's going to tap into that system. And anybody who's been within three feet of the infected person will be notified. And I guess they're going to do a quarantine. I'm not exactly sure. Royal Caribbean, actually, it, there was breaking news, I think a week or two ago, that Royal Caribbean had actually submitted for a patent for something called a tracelet, which is going to serve the same purpose. Uh, and I am like, anytime any of these types of innovations or protocols come out, I am like super stoked. I know not everybody feels the same way, but I am just so excited because any action that moves us forward gets us closer to being on a cruise ship again. Like I was mentioning before I got into some details, it does not mean that we're going to start right away. So the crew has to be trained and then they're going to do test sailings. I don't believe the cruise lines have mentioned what these test sailings are going to be like. Like, are they just going to be sailing out with the crew and then testing how that protocol... I, I would assume in the very beginning, maybe that's what the protocols are going to be is that they just sail with crew just to for all of them to kind of like get in the vibe and the flow of being on a cruise ship again, the new cleaning standards, and then all the safety protocols on top of that. It This is a lot, guys. This is not an easy task. And then from there, I would guess that some test audiences, I could see probably families of 
the cruise line employees being invited. I can see travel industry experts, such as your travel advisor, being invited also like travel industry executives. So I'm, I'm hoping from that, that I will be allowed <laughs> to be on a test sailing, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. I still would like to be on one of the first sailings just to be able to take some videos and pictures and show you what it's like, but I don't know when that's gonna be. Speaking of that too, there as of right now, I'm recording this on Monday, and so far the Norwegian line of ships and the Royal Caribbean line of ships, those two big companies have already decided that they're not gonna be sailing in 2020 at all, which is so crushing because I was so, so hoping that we would get some December sailings. Um, I haven't heard anything from the Car Carnival Company of ships, but yeah, it's very unfortunate. But I, I really think that the cruise lines are trying to give themselves a lot of time to input all these protocols, test them out, and like double test them, triple test them to make sure that when the big floodgates open and everybody's allowed back on cruising, it is as perfect as it can be. So I'm just excited for that day. And uh, I was telling some of my colleagues, I'm like, so is it like officially unofficial that January 1st, 2021 is going to be our sailing time? So I, I would put, put that out in case you were thinking about cruising, that the soonest that you could cruise would probably be January 2021. It hasn't been confirmed but that would be my best guess since a lot of the lines are already suspending their December sailings. And man, I, I am just so hopeful. Um, I can't wait. So the cruise lines do have to prove like not only to themselves that everything is working correctly, but they also have to prove to the CDC because again, the CDC is the one to give the final clearance on yes, you can sail, no, you can't sail. So I, I think that extra month that they're giving themselves, because I originally was under the mindset that, okay, November, they're gonna do all the testing, and then December, we're gonna sail again. But I think with these extra two months, they are probably going to do testing maybe through a little bit of December and be like, hey, CDC, so we've done this testing and it's gone pretty well, what do you think? And I think December, we're going to have a restart date after the cruise ships are, or the cruise lines are able to prove that everything in November worked out amazingly. So I am excited for that day. I have rambled on far too much, but really, if you can't tell, I'm a total geek about this. So please let me know what your thoughts are on the CDC lifting the cruise ban conditionally of course and uh what do you think about cruising i did have on my linkedin a little survey if you think that you're ready to go cruising wherever or if you'd prefer to cruise um closer to home or if you're ready to cruise overseas let me know what your thoughts are on cruising i welcome any ideas whatever i can do to help you out make a decision also please shoot them my way. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, weekly inside this cruise news and stay safe. I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us on the Stronger Tides podcast. Please subscribe to our podcast. And if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating or a share with your colleagues. Find us on social media at Rita Ventures Group Cruising and online at RitaVentures.net. Until next time, happy sailing.